Ceruto, try it again. Fans on the feet, 6,000 in attendance. The payoff is flied into right field, going back at the warning track, at the wall. It's gone! Go ahead, three-run home run for the senior! Peter Ceruto has given the Indiana Hoosiers the lead! Welcome to this post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. The Hoosiers dropped the opening game of the season 6-3 to to number 12 Duke in Conway, South Carolina. The Hoosiers got a tremendous start from Braden Reisdorf and home runs from Carter Matheson and Tyler Sarney. IUBase.com caught up with head coach Jeff Mercer following the game. Um, what do you think about the defense, first of all? A lot of highlight plays on this opening day. We, we focused a ton on, on our defensive play and, and being better across the board. And I thought our defense was outstanding. Maybe one of the better defended games that, that, that since I've been in Indiana that I've seen. So some of the plays that Tyler Cerny made were just spectacular. Josh Pine made a couple of great plays. Brock Tibbetts at first base was outstanding. Hayden Carlson got in the ball game and turned double play, started one. And so I just thought, I thought our defense was great. I thought uh, Stadler caught terrific. He did just did a really good job, blocked well, received really well. So I just couldn't be, could not be more pleased with the way that we played defense. You know, we, we shrunk the game. We talk about it, shrinking the game defensively and making it tougher uh, to, to have big innings. And we really did that. We, we shrunk the game. We took two or three runs off the board from them with the way that we played defense. So I was, I couldn't have been happy. I was very, very happy, very thrilled. And your choice for Friday was Reisdorf. Uh, yeah. Speak about him. He was a bulldog out there. No yeah. hits, four and two thirds yeah. before they got a couple of hits and scored the run. Yeah, yeah, he was awesome. He was awesome to go. You know, like I said four and two thirds with one run uh, against a good team. You just you couldn't have asked for a better start. You, that's what your that's what your Friday guy does. He goes out. He's through the wall first. He's competitive. Uh, he he just really gets, allows you to get it off the ground and steadies the ship. And he just was out. He was phenomenal. He was outstanding. Very tough. Managed the base. Uh, managed the running game. Uh, managed with you know guys on second base multiple times with two outs and was able to end innings and he was he was great. And uh, we saw Nick Mitchell was out of the game. What went into yeah. the thought about putting Carter up top? Well, his so Carter's if you look at the, his his history of the on base, um, he walks a ton and is a quick strike threat. And so uh, similar as to Matt Gorski a couple of years ago, where you got a guy that will walk, a guy that will have an at bat, but also was quick quick strike offense, and you're going to run that guy up there multiple times. And I thought he did a really good job. He didn't even know he was going to do it until the game started, because because <laughs> I you don't you don't want to it's a it's a change, and you don't want anybody to overthink it. And I just walked by him as he walked to the cage. I said, "Hey, you're leading off. Just do what you typically do." And that was it. And he and he did great. He was great. He had his normal at bats. Did what he normally does. Sometimes those guys will be more passive or try to do some different things to fit the narrative. And he didn't. He was he was really good. And he played really good defense too. And then with Santucci on the mound, it yeah. felt like we made him work a lot in the beginning of the yeah. game. Some quick innings later, maybe let, uh, let him off the hook a little bit. Yeah, I, I thought so too. You know, we had three or four innings where we left two guys on base, and you just you got to finish. And and credit to him, he was he was as good, maybe he probably better than advertised. In, in, in my thought, you know, I, I knew he'd be good. He was a little firmer than I thought he was. I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, typically when you see it. Uh, the Sky Report says 94, 96. It usually means 92, 94. And <laughs> then it kind of quickly drops off from there. But he was, he was every bit of it early and held it. And the fastball has unique properties to begin with. So he was, he was tough. I mean, he was, he was as good of an arm as I've seen in college baseball uh, ever. And so he was outstanding. And I thought we, we competed really well against him. We just didn't finish innings, which, you know, granted, is tough, is tough to do, especially facing that guy opening day. And then we had some quick outs there later where you're trying to ambush one and we didn't get it. And now you're in the threat for, for extending this guy out. Uh, the first lefty they brought in, we did a really good job against him. We got to him. And then the variety with the fastball changeup kind of cutter combo was, if you're just hard enough with just enough spin, the changeup was a, was the same profile. It was, it was good. We did a good job. So we won't face a better pitching staff all year than we face it. May, somebody may equal it, but we won't face a better one. And so. That's a great exercise and of, of, of experience and understanding how, how important it is to have a bats with guys in scoring position, guys on base, extending at bats, being competitive with two strikes, and it's a it's a learning opportunity. Uh, but again, kudos to that kid; he was outstanding. You talked a bit about the kind of the trade off from being pitching aggressively, not allowing free bases, but you did give up a lot of home runs today. Yeah, you're right. You kind of. 
you're 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 behind the eight ball a little bit when your offense isn't. Not that we play poorly, but it just it's, it's limited. So you're in a zero zero game, and so you're not sure which way which way to go with it. Uh, you know, Kraft was our guy last year, and and you kind of thought it might be a, ma- a tough matchup, a strike thrower versus their offense is handles off speed better than fastballs and handles sinkers better than forcing. Uh, but he's he's still your guy, and so you're you're in a zero zero game and. You know, you, you have to give the nod to your upperclassmen, which is I told him when I walked out there, which is a tough matchup. And then you're kind of trying to make a decision on what you, how you want to get, how you want to get the rest of the game. Do you want to go to stuff or do you want to go to strikes and and kind of like that model? So you're right. Uh, we have to we have to attack. We 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 set out before the season to be at six or less, and then you know trust our defense and trust our offense to carry us. And if we if we replicate that formula as we go, it it will work. It, it will give us. Uh, opportunity to win every day that we play, but yeah, there there is potential of a trade off. We're going to have to do a little bit of both. Right? We're going to have to turn it loose a little bit, but at the same time, be competitive with multiple pitches and uh, find a way to thread that needle a little bit. But I, I was pleased with how we pitched. We didn't, you made them earn it. We, you didn't, we didn't give it away. You, we, we made them work and, and made them go to their pin. And they had a couple. I always tell guys, solo homers don't don't win games. Um, and if you look at it, the, it's the guys, it's the two-run homer, it's the it's the double, it's the two out, two two-out doubles, right? It's and and they don't. I think they probably hit, really hit three solo homers, and so you're three to three game, and so you got You got to be willing to, uh, you got to be willing to to get after them and compete a little bit, and know that solo homers are going to be a part of it. But free bases are a, are a non-negotiable. You, you lose the game, right? There, there's there's no way to win for it. So it definitely is a bounce. Can you discuss why Nick Mitchell was not in the game today? Yeah, Nick got hit by a pitch uh, in the hand probably two or three weeks ago. And has been out ever since. Obviously, we wanted to kind of keep it close to the vest just to make everybody do scouting reports on him. Uh, but he's doing well. He's doing well. Uh, he's he's close to swinging again, so I think he'll be back here in the next week or two and back and, uh, and, and ready to go. So he was having a great fall. Or, I'm sorry, a great winter. He was playing great. And so we just want to make sure he's obviously healthy and fully recovered before we get back after it. But yeah, he'll be back here shortly. Okay. The Hoosiers are back in action Saturday, 3 p.m. against host number 18, Coastal Carolina. See you at the beach.